Hello, my absolutely beautiful Aries friends, and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2023, where Aries coming into this month, first of all, the focus is on finance. There it is. It's on intimacy and on assets this month. So what's going on in your relationships and what's going on in your financial life? That is where we are at. Not to mention, as we come into May, we're coming in still in the heat of being in eclipse time, right? We had the eclipse in Aries as we were in this April energy. Now, as in the first five days in May, we're rolling into the lunar eclipse in Taurus. Now, the thing I wanna cue your attention back to when we're talking about relationships and finances this month, Aries, you already know it. It's been here. You've been looking at this, you've been working on it, whether you have fully acknowledged it and made the adjustments that need to happen, or, you know, whatever it is, you have known this, you have seen this, this has been here. So, you know, when we're thinking about the astrology, one of the things that I really want to remind you is that you are your best predictor of what is going on and what is coming and what is going out of your life. You really are. Because when we stop and we slow down, it's like, okay, hold on. Let me just take an evaluation of my space, where I've been, look back at the dates that myself or any other astrologer is giving you and say, where was I? Because I've likely visited this energetic pattern already. So that's something I want to give you to just be thinking about and to take with you that it's not all shock and surprise, it's really not. But the way that it manifests, we can definitely use the astrology to help facilitate and get behind and understand a little bit more, okay? All right, Aries, before we jump in and we do have a busy Taurus-y kind of month, <laughs> second house kind of month for you, this is the last opportunity you've got to grab my packages at the regular rates. And if you're watching this before May, it's also the last opportunity to grab my astrology 101 and 102 digital courses um, for the $25 rate uh, while they're still on sale. All of that is in the description box down below, okay? All right, Aries, into the month we go. Right away, as we are coming into the month, first of all, we're going to see on the first that Pluto is turning retrograde right here in the energy of Aquarius, okay? Now, Pluto moving into the energy of Aquarius has been lighting up your 11th house space, and it's just been giving you this kind of signature of things that we are going to work on, especially as we get into 2024. So, when we're looking at the 11th house, friends, social groupings, causes, cultures, um, organizations, ambitions that you have for yourself, all of that lives in the 11th house. So when I'm saying, okay, Aries, look here at your 11th house, what's been going on for you? Where are you like, wait, this is, this is deeply changing for me. Maybe even I have a loss around a social group or it's changing because they, I can't travel with this group or this idea or this ambition anymore because it won't actually let me go where I need to be going next. Where are you feeling more empowered? in this particular area? Where are you practically feeling more empowered or you're understanding the need to become empowered around things like technology, where you have to start to understand the digital world? I will also tell you that this month, when we get to the 17th of the month and we see Jupiter move into Taurus and square this Pluto retrograde, that's it, you guys. We enter the doorway that we are not going back. The old world is not going to exist anymore. That's the entry point into the official digital revolution and the new world as we will know it and need to live in it. So where did you, where have you seen some things since March in this 11th house that have brought really big changes to the social groupings that you are a part of or things for your friends, okay? When we get to the fifth, now let me say this too, I know it's on the screen, but I wanna just say this so you have your dates queued up. But we're gonna see this retrograde go from zero Aquarius, cause it's just right here at the beginning of the sign, and it's gonna go all the way back, move back to 27 Capricorn. And this is not the last time we're gonna see a retrograde come back to Capricorn energy in 2024 as well. But for this one, watch that zero to 27 degrees of Capricorn, okay? So Capricorn, where were you working on things in your career since 2008 that have changed you or changed your title in 
the world that we call you, you know, were you single and now you're married? Where did you take a title change since 2008, okay? All right, when we get to the fifth, we're gonna see the full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Scorpio at 14 degrees. So again, the full moon is still, our, our lunar eclipse, excuse me, is still our full moon for the month. So it tells us that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, but under the full moon vibration, you know it, it has been here. You're simply getting a revelation of the information. With Scorpio energy, it's in your eighth house. So this is a change to your finances in some way, right? Or this could be a change to your partner's finance or places that you partner. Think intimacy. Where do you see into me? Some place you've been deeply connected to for a very long time or another person you've been connected to or something in your partnership connection. This can also be collaborations. This can be taxes, insurance, estate work, any of that kind of stuff that's been in your sphere and now it's time to be making the adjustments and to handle it. And we want to remember that a full moon is always about illumination and exposure, right? It's just cracking it open a little bit more. It's cracking you open a little bit more. And it will, over the next six months or so, continue to crack you open and you see it under all the light, under all of the honesty. If something's been off course, if there's been manipulation, you get to see all of these things. If you've been doing the manipulation, these things will create the change in that area. Now, the other thing that does live in the eighth house that I think is really profound at this eclipse is astrology. So where, my beautiful friends, are you being called more to astrology, numerology, tarot, any of the natural arts that help us understand the world around us and understand our insides and therefore bring about healing? This would be a really fantastic eclipse for you to see what you create, but just keep in mind it's already been here, okay? Now, when we get to the seventh, we are going to see that Venus enters into the energy of Cancer. Now, this lights up your fourth house space, Aries, home, family, real estate, property, things with your parents, your roots. So whatever is going on in that area for you, Venus is coming in. And remember, Venus is bringing a benefit. Venus is also an attraction energy. So what are you attracting to your home space are you attracting someone into your home space are you uh, are, are you wanting to beautify your home or you're you're packing up your house to move just like i am or you're like i just need to move the sofa it does not have good feng shui over here you know have there been challenges within your family unit and bring and venus is bringing a little bit of salve to be healing here now another thing i was thinking about because it is a time when we get to to may it tends to be a time where people are looking to bring, you know, the school season or a work season or they're getting ready for some kind of vacation or something like that. So under Venus here, I think you could realistically be booking a trip or maybe you're catering an event. You know, Cancer loves its food just as much as Venus does, right? Venus and Taurus. So these changes could be happening here. One last thought about the fourth house space is that it is really good for forgiveness with Venus here in this energy of Cancer. So if you've needed to bring some warmth or you've needed to go back through your collections of memories and understanding of people, places, and things in your life and grant forgiveness so that you can be free, this is a really lovely season to be able to do that, okay? On the 14th, we are gonna see Mercury turning direct in the energy of Taurus, but as always, I caution you to remember that I follow the full retrograde cycle. So we have been looking at Mercury being in pre-retrograde shadow time since April 7th, and it will leave the entirety of its retrograde cycle on May 31st. But as we are here on the 14th and we see Mercury come direct at five degrees of Taurus, between five and 15 degrees of Taurus over this last few weeks, what's been happening for you, Aries, in your financial sector? Is there information that you needed to review about your finances, about your budget, about how you're making money? You know, we've had an eclipse that was over in the eighth house. So this is eighth house, second house dancing. Did information present itself to you about money that you're like, oh, I didn't know that or I thought that was something that was going on and now I realize I need to handle it. What came up for you? 
that was in review while Mercury went retrograde in these degrees. So make sure you grab your own chart, Aries, and you're looking at five to 15 degrees of Taurus to see which house this sits in for your personal chart, okay? And then we'll see it all come to culmination when Mercury gets back to 15 degrees, May 31st in the energy of Taurus. And when we get to the 16th, we see Jupiter enter into the energy of Taurus. This is a 12 year cycle, so flashback 12 years ago, what was going on for you in your money sector, Aries, were you setting yourself up for success? Because whatever you've been doing, whatever you've been working on, Jupiter is showing up and is going to amplify that. And while Jupiter does bring opportunities for you to Taurus, make changes, become steady, steady your relationships, steady those finances, right? Create longevity here. Jupiter only meets us where we're at. So what you've got going here is what Jupiter is going to match. Okay, I love that we like we've talked about Jupiter as this benefic energy and it is, but Jupiter is not entirely interested in giving you this great blow up benefit if you if that's not what you've got available. It just wants to amplify what you have and give you the opportunity to learn more about how to either keep it or adjust it. So keep that in mind. That said, when we get to the 17th, we're going to see Jupiter now in the energy of Taurus come into a square with Pluto in the energy of Aquarius and it is retrograde. So this is why I'm telling you, I think that this is so significant. I've had an opportunity in this last few months to travel with other astrologers and really hear their mundane or global and world perspectives. And I agree. I think that when Jupiter and Pluto square against each other here, that's it. We're done with what was the old world and we need to solidly come into the way business families will function, the issues that are currently on the stage, the celebrations that we need to have, but this, this is it, right? So it's also an indicator to you, Aries, that truly maybe the way you used to make money, if it is not current and it has not been sustainable um, in that old way, first of all, do you have a new way? Did you have a skill? Did you have a talent that didn't work out at another time in your life? And it was simply because the world wasn't ready for you then. You weren't ready for the world then. And now that the world has changed, you can offer your skill. You can offer your service. You can make that investment. You can push forward. Now, the one thing I'll say is that because Jupiter will amplify what is, if the dream, if the vision is too big and there's no plan behind it, you'll struggle, I think, to get it out into the new world. So if it's starting a business, having a relationship, having a baby, making a move, just make sure you've got some support, some education, and some structure because the square is going to ask you to acknowledge that it has to be this way now and it will be more frustrating if you don't have guidance, okay? Now, just to add to all of that, <laughs> when we get to the 19th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of uh, Taurus as well. So this is going to be really interesting because we've had all of this eclipse energy going on, you know, second, eighth house dynamics happening for you. And now we've got this new moon on the heels of Jupiter moving in. Okay. So it's like plant your seeds of intention. What do you want to begin here? You've got new information. You've had new revelation. There's likely new circumstances that have been presented to you. What do you want to begin here in your second house? What's going on? Where are you saying, you know what? I do have this skill. I do have this talent. I am. I do have this money over here and I'm willing to make an investment. Now keep in mind, Jupiter and Taurus, because it'll meet you where you're at. If you're like, oh, I'm going to just spend all of this money. Jupiter will meet you where you're at and it can get really big and really out of control fast. So again, make sure you've got some some bumpers, some barriers, some different ways of understanding some guidance as to what you're doing with your finances so that it doesn't go crazy and wild, which doesn't mean that it's not okay to spend money and make a big purchase. It's Jupiter energy as well in Taurus, right? Maybe you're going on a trip, you're planning that vacation for the first time, you're making a move, you're making a big investment. These things are great. You just wanna make sure while you're planting your seeds of intention, you're also giving it some structure or some guidance to make sure that your money will grow because you don't want couch potato money, right? No couch potato money, no couch potato relationships. They've got to be growing, thrive, thriving, and moving, okay? Now, as we are going to move to the 20th, this is actually interesting. 
because Mars is going to move into the energy of Leo. So lighting up your fifth house space Aries. Now this is great. First of all, we just had Mars and Gemini for so long that I feel like we're still a little bit shocked, even though it's made it all the way through cancer season, right? We're like, that was so much. Seven months really is a long time with a personal planet in hold and, and we can feel that. So I feel like in cancer season, we needed time to clarify our motives to kind of shake it off. But now as Mars gets into Leo, it is like, oh, okay. Lay your hair down, laugh, let's play, be proud of what you've done, come out confidently, bring joy into space, right? It's new adventures that are available for you, new action beginnings are available for you, Aries, here. So what are you starting? Is it conception? Are you having a baby? You're making a baby. You're making babies, right? Because <laughs> there's practice that goes with that too, and that's very fifth house, romance, pleasure is all in there. But also, are you conceiving a new business? Are you conceiving a new residence? What new things are happening for your children or children in your life? That inner child in you, where has that had some healing and attention? And you're able to move forward in, you know, it can seem really dramatic. That's the thing. Mars in Leo can seem big and it can seem dramatic. But you know what is more dramatic than I think wearing a flashy outfit or going on that extravagant vacation or you know saying things that are shocking on the internet is when you realize that joy and pleasure heal you heal your inner child and that therefore when you are healed in that way and you go into your family unit you go into your friendship unit you spend time alone that there is a space to stop using words like complicated and struggle and suffering and i'm tired there's a space for pleasure and for play because the healing has happened through joy. So I think that Mars in this area is phenomenal for that. Now Mars is still Mars in the fifth house. There can be conflict, right? Where does there need to be some conflict that comes up because you need to say what you need to say or somebody needs to say what they need to say to you to get the situation moving forward. Mars is still Mars and Leo and sometimes we've got to have a breakdown so that we have a breakthrough. But Mars here is ultimately lots of action swimming through this fifth house. Now when we get to the 21st, we're going to see the sun move into the energy of Gemini. We'll begin Gemini season. So time to light up your third house space and you do this in this area every year. So it Again, flash and pattern back Aries. What was going on for you last May? What information, what deals, what communication, what learning, what desire to learn was coming up for you? You know, did you start a course of study or something like that? And where are you at with it? How is it going? Do you have a routine around it? Are you feeling successful? Were you writing that book? Were you getting that website together? Buying, selling, houses, cars, what was going on? Because as the sun is traveling through the energy of Gemini, first of all, remember, Mars did seven months worth of work over here for you to get your desires sorted out. What you want here wants you. And it's very clear that you want it and it wants you. So now use that sun motivation to move towards it and allow this area to unfold around you. May is going to be a busy and dynamic month. We've got big movements. We've got big aspects that are happening. But ultimately, when you use your astrology to remember, this empowers you with some information of the energetic signatures. But ultimately, you are in charge of knowing when to hold, when to fold, and to take action. I think that you can have a really great month, Aries. And I look forward to seeing what adventures are coming for you and that hopefully you will share with us as well. So make sure you like this video if it's been valuable to you. Join us, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you here for all the monthly updates and the good things that are happening around here. Have a gorgeous May, and I look forward to seeing you in June and, of course, every week in between there. Bye, Aries.